Movement number four. Dragon seeks path. Dragon whips his tail. Yo, my man, why you got on that purse, huh? I ain't seen no purse. I'm the big dills. Don't do that. Hundred dollars for showing in the bit at you heard? Get your money up, not your funny up. It's the Gun Food Podcast, the Mum Food Podcast. Get your money up, not your funny up, dummy. Pro Degan, make a paper till the sun goes down. You heard me? You dick. We out here. Got my man, Screwface John. In the cut. Like a bandage, you heard? Um, Link down below. In the right here. Right here. You go get you a nice tea spray. I'm sitting in the asshole. Anyways, all black made back. I'm sitting in the why? The butthole. Why? Like, why are you sitting there? Like, there's so <laughs> many places to sit in the car. You could have described the back, like way back, like any no, type of. So many back. things that are dark. Yeah. Why? Why was that? The... Yo, man. Yo, we out here, son. Part two of the thing. Welcome thing. Podcast. We out here, yo. Make sure y'all go check out that Vic Menstra diss track video. We at 12,000 views right now. So crazy. Only been two days. It's been up. The goal is to hit 20,000. The audio hit 20,000. I know we could do it. So if you have, if you watched, if you haven't, go, if you haven't watched it, go watch it. If you've already watched it, then go watch it again. You ain't pick up all them bars. You picked up all them bars. You lying. You lying. You lying. Go pick up all them bars. You listen to it again. Do what you got to do. Fact though, man. <laughs> go get that Strictly for the Fans EP too, man. That is fire, bro. That is fire, bro. It's crazy to see, like, the reaction channels that have reacted to your... Um, oh, yeah. Shout out to... No, I'm tripping. No Life Shout out Shack. to No Life Shack. Shout out to Joey <coughs> Rack. Uh, shout out to my man Sick Flows. I heard he's about to be doing it, too. On Monday, yo. This is what YouTube needs, bro. We are the new generation of YouTube, bro. We are not these old class man we came in taking out the old class that was my first all right nigga first nigga i gotta see Karen, you out of here let's get you know what i mean definitely, shout out definitely trying Karen, to we be got the, trying to be young damon johns out here you know what i mean and we don't got the complexion for the protection you know what I mean? so shout out to all that De <laughs> I'm definitely so, about to get this black power tattoo on my back. I know that's mad random, but I'm definitely getting a black power tattoo on my back. I am black power. Anyway, so yesterday, we did the 50 Cent, like, first of all, the illest man food of all time, is the 50 Eminem and Ja Rule beef. Story of this war. Because you can't even call it a beef. Just, it's a war. Like, um... Three parts, all parts of it, breaking it down. Really forgot where it started because this is a, 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 a beef that's been going on for almost my whole life. You know what I'm saying? So, if you think about it, <coughs> the first episode we did was talking about everything that started before 50 got shot up until 50 getting shot. So, quick little recap. We um, figured out they went to high school together. I had said that, and I think Andre, uh, you also uh, just threw my whole government out there. Whatever you think, you also um, said the same thing, but you said like uh, there's probably some jealousy in there. Yeah, uh, we talked about the in high school. Use the man homie line. That probably has something to do with it, and then the whole Prem having something to do with Murder Inc. And yep. then Prem also having something to do with Fifty getting shot allegedly. And the ghetto Quran. So all the street stuff, all the real live, like, for the people who just were only hip to everything after in the club. Facts. Son. Now, this part, tell them what we about to break down, Ducky. We about to go through <laughs> 50 getting signed and basically everything that was the 50 and Ja and Eminem war saga that led up like literally everything until game basically right or, or no new game york, was kind of in the mix towards the end of that situation but we'll say no, like, i'm from new york was after that 
and I remember they're still cooking. Like the beef was yeah, still the, going. Yeah, the, the I'm from New York was yeah, that was after um That's yeah. what got Ja Rule. I mean, that's what got Fat Joe in the beef. Dang, so not nah, no, 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 no. The massacre is what got all of them involved, but the massacre. Bro, I'm pretty came. sure Piggy Bank was after I'm from New York. I'm telling you, 50 Cent has said the reason why he went at Joe, that's why they're friends now, is because he gave him an olive branch and he was trying to make his enemy hot. And and he said that I'm from New York track was a, was a, he didn't like that. So he was trying to get, so he said, if you're close to him, you're getting it. Um, hold on. I was guaranteed that's how it happened. Like, I literally love a 50 Cent, but he said that recently. It is. Honey guns or honey clips. Yeah. So New York came out in 2004, and then Piggy Bank came out in 2005. Yeah. So like a whole year. So that's what I'm saying. The like, album please. came out. Well, it came out October 20. New York came out October 27th of 2004. Um, I don't know exactly when Piggy Bank the song. Hold on. I'm telling you, Piggy Bank was a response to New York, bro. Fifty has said it. That's the reason they beefed. Anyway, so let's just get let's get into the story. Yeah, that's fast. So, so fifty gets popped nine times, right? Um, well, allegedly, but yeah, or five times what they're saying, but whatever. He got popped. That's a little low. See, before the fifty beef, I mean, before fifty got popped and got signed, he was actually working with uh, Dr- uh not Dre, Diddy. Yes, and people didn't know that. That's why in, in uh, uh, <coughs> Richard Archie, he, he goes, uh, something, something like she found out I ghost wrote for P. Diddy, like he said that line in there. And um, so, 50 gets shot, block is hot. And then, I don't know, because there's a bunch of different stories about how M found 50. All I know is M did find 50. I, I heard somebody brought 50 set to M's attention, which makes sense because M seems like that kind of person. But after he gets shot, he gets signed, and after that, he literally get rich or die trying. Is the greatest was more about album of get rich. What is the greatest hip hop album of all time? We could argue. Get rich or die trying should have been called get draw rule out of here or die trying because that was Murder Inc. was that was it like that. What we gonna do, man? Well, first things around. first. Hold on, before we go to get rich or die trying, the first things first. What made Fifty Cent pop? was the 8 Mile soundtrack. Wangsta was on the 8 Mile soundtrack. And that's what had people being like, yo, who is this? And then shortly after, um, 50 had came to the basement um, with Tiggy and stuff when it was like in the old basement. And he was talking. They was like, yo, how many records you sell? And 50, like of Wangsta. And 50 was like, yeah, man, you know, got the streets buzzing. 50 was like at the time that Wangsta was popping, like the eight mile soundtrack time of Wangsta popping. Yo, 50 was buzzing in the streets, but it was way more of like an isolated thing. It wasn't like the world wasn't necessarily yeah, like hip to who still, 50 was. Like M was still way bit like because even though wankster was a standout track from the eight mile soundtrack you need to lose yourself oh you. yeah no facts 100 percent. but what i'm just saying that's what put the bug in the mainstream's ears to 50 cent was that wankster <coughs> he was wound up wankster? with that video bro you said that 50 cent was that wankster yeah but i mean i meant like you know what i mean but like <laughs> that's when 50 started getting the interviews you started seeing his face. You started seeing who he was. Then you started hearing his story. And then that 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 Wangster video dropped. And that's when it was like, all right, all right, who is this dude? Like, actually, who is this dude? Like, yo, I remember because people wasn't rapping like 50. Like, people were not, people were on that melodic. That was like the melodic stage of hip hop. Like, when 50 came out, that was... I mean, Ja was definitely doing that before him, but I feel you. What do you mean? Melodic rapping? No, 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 That's not what I'm saying. That's what state hip-hop was in before 50 came out. was oh, more yeah, melodic. Yeah, 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 yeah. 50 came out, and he was rapping. He was... 
Kaka, he was dissing. Well, 50 was the return to the gangster um, archetype. 50 was returned to the, um, cause the hip hop was getting a little poppy Facts. at that time. Think about 100%. it. Cause remember that was like, uh, when everybody had a club song. Yeah. It was very melodic. Where literally like, I don't mean like a club. I mean a song with the Nelly, word club in it. Yeah. Right? Like Nelly, like literally to pump it up. Like all that shit was. That's why I thought like little tangible. That's why I thought Meek Mill also. That's why people like Meek Mill, but I thought Meek Mill could have been could be way bigger his career is still gonna keep going but uh out the gate could have been bigger because i was like man he was a he was a return to gangsterism when things were getting a little sidetracked from it. yes it's always that's what always happens in, in hip-hop <clears throat> hip-hop loves gay like people would be like oh it's not cool to be gay hip-hop loves gangsters hip-hop loves it it's just that that's what i love we get sick of it quick we get sick of it quick so <laughs> hip-hop you can only do it for so long it doesn't last as long as just like rap rappers um, because you even during when the gangsters are cool, people always go back and look at the rap rapping as the, what was rap. But the as thing a, is, though, is that Fifty was um, Fifty was a gangster, but Fifty was also rapping. G Unit was rapping. Period. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I'm gonna keep it a buck. At that time, people were not people were considering Fifty did not have lyrics like that. Fifty Cent was not like because of his lyrics. In retrospect, <laughs> because um, you gotta remember, I was the most. Ribbity rap rap ribbity I don't rap. Agree with we that. were spoiled. I think we that people. I think that fifty. I think that people look at fifty like he was a lyrical nigga. But I think I the reason I can I, I, I can almost know. explain why because I feel like the disses are what made people look at fifty as a lyricist. Honestly, I, I don't think so. I, I mean, every single person that dissed him <laughs> always talked about how he can't rap, and because he was looked at more like. Nah, I'm telling you, what it was, was we were spoiled at the time, because everybody was rapping. So his level was still rap, compared to today, oh my God, he's he's like, compared to some people today, he's Kendrick Lamar, you know what I'm saying? Like, But at the time, people were not looking at 50 and getting the ugly face from the things he was saying. That was not what you were going to 50 for. You were going to 50 for the real, the raw, the rugged, the street, the... The gangster, gangster, not really. As yeah, black. but people yeah. still, people still consider people like that lyrical. I think. Not at the time they were not looking at him. Like, so, do you think people see Ghostface as lyrical? Yes. What's the difference? Ghostface Killer. Ghostface Killer is a more of a traditional lyricist, and he's surrounded by a lot of lyricists, and he's on more lyric, lyrical type beats. So he gets. I mean, like, so people are gonna be more swayed to saying he's a lyricist. Like he's he's rapping just because he's not. He has I felt well, like to me not? the in the club was like, yo, this is my club song. Like actually, I feel like outside of that lyrically, bro, how could you not look at that album like it was lyrical goodness? It was one hundred percent. It just I don't really think it like lyrically patiently waiting is his probably best verse on that song. And I even said so we always make the joke where it's like. When did he start rapping like this? All of a sudden, like the M clearly ghost wrote this. Like we, like we, nah. come on, bro. He's not looked at as a lyricist at that time. Like he was not. We're talking about a time that rock him was still actively tra- <laughs> like, like, barely. Barely. yeah. But I'm saying, like, you, you still get, you can still hear rock him. Like he was not considered a lyricist for that time. We talking about like. 2004. Two, Yo, put you. in the comment section, bro. If you older, my G, put in the comment section. If you was like, you know, 20s or late, even like, you know, 16, 17 would not drop. Tell me if people consider 50 Cent as a lyricist or not, because I want to know what people think. But I think that people consider 50 a lyricist. I think in retrospect, people consider his stuff a more lyrical than they did when it first came out. But when it came out, 50 was not regarded as a lyricist. I'm telling you, what Eminem, listen, Eminem was out at the time. And right. I'm telling you, music really changed in 2006. Like, people don't realize how low the lyrical bar dropped in it did. and never really came back up. It's going back up, but 2004, 2005, and before, the level of, you had to be able to rap just, to, it, like, because people that we can, like, 
It's hard to explain because people that didn't consider at the time that weren't lyrical. Oh, lyrical? What? When you go back and listen to some of that stuff, you'd be like, oh, wait a minute. Even Nelly. Nelly, yeah. I was about to say, that's like my number Nelly. one. Yeah. Like people, were, Nelly was a pop star, but he's saying he had to say these with the rubber hammers and damadine, but man, he still had to be chopping, flipping, doing stuff lyrically, like where it's like. But when two thousand six came, it dropped like a ton of bricks. It dropped to like a remedial level of rapping and like resenting lyrics, and now it's slowly crawling back. It's up. weird though because it really like okay, so I yo see now I feel like we could make this shit a whole episode, but I, the thing about it is so crazy because I agree with that, but in the same sense, like I kind of it really wasn't that long that that was happening because like think about the snap music era, right? That what was happening? Like that that people were like not really rapping, rapping. Like there was a time when club music was the thing. Don't get me wrong, the Lil Johns, all that kind of stuff. But like, I could make an argument that that's that the the impacts of that is is still going on. Yeah, but I'm <laughs> saying people, but there's still like the still the biggest artists that are out are the more lyrical rappers. Yeah, but even I'm gonna tell you this. There's a lot of verses that I would be like, besides Kendrick, I would say, and even some Kendrick, I would say post-2004, they wouldn't be considered as much as lyricists. Like, they would be considered good artists, but like, there's certain... Yeah, I agree with that. We're, it changed. We're talking about I agree with a, that. a hit song was... It before 2006, in the 90s, was get in the middle, little, 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 you know, little, like, come on, like, that was a hit song, like, so it's like, yeah, but hustle, I mean, like, I'm saying, like, but if that's the case, then you would be ignoring everything that Wayne did, and everybody that Wayne influenced to rap better, 2004, or no, 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 not 2004, I said, because if you think about two after 2004, if you start to think about 2006 and seven, inwards really started rapping again more around not that really, time. Not really. Kind of. Really. How you figure? How you yeah. figure? Because you're going to say Wayne? Yeah, there's always niggas in the, in the era that rap. That don't mean that the... the I mean, the not only Wayne, rapping. though. What do you mean? Who? There's a lot of... Who was rapping in 2006? Bro, 2007? hold on. I'm about to pull up top selling records of 2000 what? Give me the year. Six. 2006 or seven. And even Wayne is is Wayne considered one of the man? Listen, it, it's it, 2006. We're still coming out of that. We're still you ready. You ready? Okay. okay. You want me to tell you what the top selling records of 2007 were? Mm-hmm. Common, Finding Forever, American Gangster, Graduation, Lupe Fiasco, The Cool, Ghostface Killer, Big Doe Rehab, Talib Kweli. Wait, wait, wait. What is? Wait, 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 wait. What is this billboard? Literally looking at this right now, bro. Ghostface. Wait, wait. That doesn't make. I know for a fact because Derek was a. No, 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 no. That Ghostface record was not one of the top ten of that two thousand six. It might have not been top ten. Ghost didn't have top hip hop. Top ten. Like what, nigga? No, nah, that's definitely not correct. Highest for okay. Hold on. I'm gonna tell you right now. Highest first week sales in 2007, Graduation, Curtis, T.I. vs. T.I.P., American Gangsta, Fabulous from Nothing to Something, Common, Finding Forever, UGK, Underground Kings, Lupe Fiasco, The Cool, Young Buck, Buck the World, and Timberland Shock nigga, Value. My nigga, of all of those niggas you just named, post-2006, I would name, they, there would be about four traditional lyricists in there. Four out of ten, that's that's very good. It's not even... Ha no, it's not. The other people, though, are not not lyrical people, though, is what my I'm nigga, saying. My nigga, it post... Okay, post hold on. So, people are going to put Kanye West up there. Yeah, obviously. we got so far off 50. People, yeah, no, nah, we're going to get back. Okay, so, people are going to go... They're going to consider... not a traditional lyricist. No, throw that out there. Go on. T.I., li lyrical or not? No, throw that out there. All right, that's not considered so lyrical not in 2006. Rubber band, but no, that's not considered lyrical in, in, in the eras where before that. No, it's not considered lyrical. It's not. 
He's telling good stories. He's saying shit. But we're talking about niggas that were flipping shit and still selling hit records. But you like, still had Jay-Z, Fabulous, Common, Lupe, Fiasco. I would... Fabulous is a little shaky because the type of music he's dropping is not considered lyricism. And he, I know why he drops the songs he drops, but he's not... I wouldn't say the people who are buying that are buying that because he's a lyricist. No. Yo, Beanie uh, Siegel was uh, up there. Freeway was up there. Um, that's crazy. Play a Circle actually debuted at number 27. That was Upper Bad Boy. Yeah. Upper Bad Boys, yeah. That's what I'm now, anyway, back to 50, though. Back to 50. So, anyways, yeah. 50 said, <laughs> Be so, yeah. God. Yeah, so anyway, he drops Get Rich or Die Trying, which is basically Get Ja Rule out here, Die Trying. And then almost every song he's going at the end is like, in one way or another. And I understand it because if you feel like these people, you know, had something to do with you being shot, then it goes beyond yeah. lyrics. Yeah, it goes right. beyond rapping. Now I need you out of here. I, I don't want you to be able to eat. I want you to starve type right. stuff. But I think... Okay, I, I, this is kind of going a little fast, but I'll go back. But I feel like 50's downfall was that also. Like, he didn't, he he literally invested too much into tanking them that after they were tanked, he really didn't have anything else to do. Like, he was kind of just floating until he found his next beef. And none of them compared. Like, Rick Ross and him does not compare, <laughs> him and him does not compare to that. I kind of feel fighting. like I agree with that, but I also kind of feel like 50 Cent just, he changed a lot. I, he he kind of forgot what people liked him for originally. True. He became a completely different artist. Like, Get Rich or Die Trying. I I like The Massacre. You don't like The Massacre. But I say Get Rich or Die Trying, The Massacre, um, the the first G-Una album, and the documentary are four of, like, very, 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 very classically good records. And to <laughs> me, like, after, even on The Massacre, but after The Massacre, 50 was a completely different, different artists i could just tolerate the massacre more because there was still some of old 50 but then he had like the candy shops you know what i mean and that was the kind of stuff i didn't like but like i don't know i don't know why he did that but but let's get back to money the what M like what so wait, when m got okay so when uh, after he gets signed to aftermath and when that happens that's when m inherits the beef with ja rule so that's where now we start getting nailed in the coffin. We start getting uh, the Hail Mary. Hail Mary. We start getting the... Because Ja had said Haley's name in the song. And now you see how it became like a whole war. And Murder, Inc. was really in a bad position at that time because the feds was hitting them too. Yeah, they didn't so have they didn't any have, money. They didn't have any yeah, they had money no to fight resources back. to go up against 50 and 50 was hotter than fish grease. Like... The hot 50 Cent was literally Superman at that time. So it was like... This N-word had a video game, bro. Facts. He had, it was horrible, but facts. Definitely had a shooting game that you can't aim. Like, right. I'm trying to think. Like, before 50, other than Sean John and, and um, uh, Rock Aware and Academics as well, Fabulous had that. What what rap was really like impactful with clothes the way that because that even rock away mix? what happened? Wait, was are Fabulous Fabulous is, was academics? That's him. At the beginning, yeah. What fat fat you don't remember that? Yo, go back and watch like go back are and you sure when he was a model for them? Yo, he could have been, but all I know is he was definitely like their brand, like he was like their their spokesperson. Like I mean, yeah, like just like Joel Santana was like Lot Twenty Nines. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I'm saying though, like I can give that to him because he's the one that made it hot. Because even like okay, like like Sean John and stuff like that is like I mean, if somebody else would have put that on, whatever, I don't know. But I'm saying like there wasn't that many people that had like clothing brands. And stuff like that that were like impact. I mean, Fifty had the deal with Two Exists with the little uh, tank top joints. 
So he was doing that. He pushed that style. Then he had them G-Unit sneakers. And people were actually some like he did a Reebok deal with them. I know Birdman had like lugs and stuff like he that. The, he had the G-Unit spaghetti straps. Nigga. Definitely had the G-Unit spaghetti. I'm just saying, yo, 50 had a lot of impact on I the culture. I definitely had me one. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Facts. Yo, he had it all just, just swimming in it. But just. He had a lot of impact on, on like what people like look like. And shit, like he did. I mean, he he had a certain style, and he still dresses the exact same, which is disgusting. But um, yeah, <laughs> like yo, fifty yo, he had that dog fifty. My f- yo, listen. So anyway, wait. Let's get back to the the, the beef. So oh Eminem and them. That's a weird thing to say. Eminem and them. Say that Eminem and them. Eminem it sounded like them. he was rapping. Eminem and them. Okay, so Eminem and them. Inherit this beef, right? So, this is, I think, around the time when Ty, Black Ty, allegedly, I mean, he said it on, he said it on camera. So, they were in the studio. I can't remember exactly what happened. Go back and watch Beefs. Black Ty said the whole thing. But eventually, they got to a scuffle. They cut the lights out. And Ty got to poking people. See, I don't know if 50 got stabbed in that, but somebody got stabbed and then Yayo was like, you know, get the, get the strap, ironically. And that's when everybody started dipping out the room and shit like that. So it went beyond just records. This was some oh, real, yeah. like, street beef. This was, okay, you think you, you shot me? All that's, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Shout and Buck, Buck a, uh, piece of nigga up at, um, the, the war show. Was. Yeah, facts. Yeah, like, yeah. they got into With that. a fork. Fork the nigga. Word up. That's how you know Buck was. <laughs> Yo, son. Yo, son. He love him some forks, boy. <laughs> so, what happened was, not only was Murder Inc. imploding, but they're also deteriorating on the outside too. And they had no way to. I remember Ashanti was like their last run. Ashanti was like, uh, 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 did I say Murder Inc.? It is Murder Inc. Uh, Murder Inc.'s uh, uh, last run was like with Ashanti. They had a bunch of John and Ashanti records together, but 50 was just not allowing it to really happen. Right. So, Ja comes out with Clapback. You remember that? We gonna clap back. We gonna clap uh, back. He he dropped that so late, bro. So he definitely late. It that was like he hard. needed it. That's what it was. He needed. He knew that that would have that attention. That's to me why he did it. Because like, nah, it had bad attention, bro. Because people were just like, bro, come on. No, I know that. I know it. Did. I'm saying, but he knew that <laughs> he would be talked about because Ja Rule had fell off so bad that. He was, like, no longer in the discussion. He wasn't getting nut, bro. Like, just go watch top 10 countdowns from that time. Like, that era, bro, 50 did something dirty to Ja. Like. Real, real dirty. Definitely did my son dirt. Like, bro, he really got him out of. Dog, to go from Last Temptation, an album like Last Temptation, to what he went because he still had hits because New York was a hit and New York is a classic yeah and see that's what got Ja I mean Joe involved with the beef Fast. because 50 was mad because he thought he had extinguished Ja and then he he caught him one with New York caught definitely him. caught him one definitely yeah. caught him a classic and like, but I also think Ja 50 was a little like I said I don't know if I said this on camera off but he was a little too invested in Murder, Inc.'s demise, that when they were demised, it was almost like 50 then took on a lot of the things he didn't like about Ja Rule, such as the singing. Um, and then he started dropping just a little bit, Window Shopper. Uh, now, mind you, in retrospect, like some of these songs I listen back and they just remind me of a good good time. Like, they, it, it's all... It's all uh, uh, what's that? Nostalgia. When I, like I listen to those songs because I'm shot. starting to like some of those now, but like only because it reminds me of a time. But uh, th- subjectively, those songs are horrible. Like some, like a little bit is is I don't like. A this. little bit was trash. I didn't like that, but I liked yeah. Window Shopper though. 
I do. Like what's your name? What's your name? Uh, what's that name? Um, amusement park. Uh, yeah, garbage. nah, that stuff. Is... Um, what else? Uh, what you, shop, you like uh, that? Get money. It definitely sounded like my uncle got out of jail, and like it definitely sounded how he dresses. Like you know what I'm saying? Like he caught him on with that. But definitely I think he four was panel more like hats. more more tapping into a very early viral um, thing. Like yeah. that was before the internet was super established. Is what it is. YouTube wasn't really stuff. So when I think the Coca Cola deal was the moment. So he made a song around the moment, capitalizing on the moment, like what people do now, and it kind of like went viral before before viral was a thing. I don't think people were really looking for music like that for Fifty after that, because that was like we was like almost in high school by that time. No, we were in high school. That was okay. Yeah, uh, I that was like towards more the end of high school. Time. So it was Fifty had definitely already had his run. And yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. The the way, the only reason... <laughs> Damn. Excuse me. The only reason why I feel like 50, I can let 50 live is because I have to ignore everything that he did after a certain point. Because if I, like, took into account the music that he's made since Get Rich or Die Trying, I would hate that nigga. I would hate. Well, it hey, I be I have to regard it because I be hearing some songs. What was that one song here with G in it? Which man, one? he be coming out with songs with. Oh my god, I love "Put It Down on Me." The worst part is Fifty Cent rapping. You like that song? Oh, nigga, that's a classic. I hate that song. Yeah, he he reminds me too much of Trey songs, and you know how I feel about it. Fifty was that was not doing it. Put it down on me, put it down on me. He was definitely coming to fuck. And I swear he's been rapping that same verse ever since then. Because like every time, because him and Jeremiah have fourteen songs, and he keeps rapping that same verse. I swear it's just the same verse. Yo, yeah, man. I have to ignore it. I, I, I I've can't, never I seen. There's something about like aftermath that I almost feel like them dudes get so big and so successful that they forget what people like about it. It took Eminem so many tries, and then Kamikaze like now he's like, oh, so that's what they liked about me. That's like what it's like. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's like he had to shoot t- t- twice in one year to hit it. So it's like. What is going on over there? Game? The same way. It's like they forget what people liked about them. And then be like, just do some other stuff. Like, Game was that guy. Like, he was that guy. That's for the third episode, but yeah. he was but, Yeah, the that game guy. came around. And I think to end this, my thing where I feel like 50 started coming down on the downslide was because he started inheriting too many beefs. Beefs, I think he was too beefy. Even though that's his, like, trademark now, I feel like he would have had a little bit more longevity musically if he would not have done all that. Yeah, no, that's facts. He would have because people people look to him for that. That's the only thing people look to him for. But but here's the thing, though. Does that matter? Because there's a lot of dudes from 50s era that are nowhere nowhere, nowhere to be found right. And 50 is still relevant. People who that their entire career is based on dissing inwards, they don't be like looked at the same way. They don't. But I'm saying 50 Cent is still very relevant in hip hop. There's a lot of people who. Can't oh, no, that's him. facts, but not for music. But I'm saying, listen, there's a lot of people who came before him, there's a lot of people who came after him, there's people who are bigger than him that are nowhere to be found. 50 Cent is still in the ethos of hip-hop. Yeah, that's So fast. it makes it think, like, who did get the last laugh? Because 50 gets to be, like, he's... Relatively he's one of the more. biggest things in hip-hop, 100%. But he's like a staple in hip-hop. Yeah. I'm telling you, I don't know what, what like, magic, ju- like, juju that Aftermath and Interscope had, but just think of... <laughs> Every major act that came out of there is not just a successful rapper, but one of the most integral parts of hip hop, of modern day hip hop. You could even kind of make the argument for game in the whole West Coast thing. Oh, one hundred percent. 
100%. So it's like every... Like, Who was rapping from the West Coast other than Snoop Dogg that everybody knew? Nah, Game definitely brought the West Coast back. That's not an argument. But that's part, for part three. I already know this one got is going to be. We probably talked to Yo, you watching this. Ago. What's the word? Code word? The code word is pickle sandwich. Word. I'd eat that. Write oh. pickle sandwich in the comment section if you watched all the way to the end. If you did, you the real MV Pizzle. Definitely. Yo. Grr. Mum food podcast. Get your money up. Not your funny up, dummy. We out here. And it froze just now, so we so lit. You heard? God.